Welcome to the last lesson module of the AltiBoard's Basics course. In this lesson, we will review how to control the AltiBoard design rules and get your design ready for fabrication. We will also be generating Gerber files and other reports that are required by fabrication houses to fabricate the PCB. Once a design is technically ready, improving the appearance, readability, and labeling become important aspects for the quality of your board. Also, running a design rules check for errors is a critical step before exporting your AltiBoard file to Gerber files. Before you export to Gerber format, you can prepare your board for fabrication by placing text, which is useful for annotation purposes. You can also import DXF drawings, such as a company logo, from a CAD program. Finally, after you have prepared your board for fabrication, you will have to export a file from AltiBoard in a format which can be understood by the equipment at the board manufacturer. One of the most commonly used formats is Gerber. In AltiBoard, you can improve your board design using features such as corner mittering and tear dropping. Corner mittering is used in AltiBoard to reduce or remove sharp angles on placed traces. This is important for fabrication purposes and you have the option of applying corner mirroring to your entire design or to selected traces. A teardrop is a flare that you can add to a trace where the trace connects to a pad. This is usually used with very small sized traces to prevent possible breakage in copper between the trace and the pad. Along the course of your design and until the very last step, design rules and connectivity checks in AltiBoard ensure your design does not have any errors. The design rule error appears in the DRC tab of the spreadsheet view as they occur and they disappear if they are corrected. Or you can manually run a DRC check at any point. A connectivity check should be performed periodically on your design to ensure that nets, pins, and net lists are all synchronized and accurate. Let's now take a look at how to prepare your board for fabrication in AltiBoard. Let's start off by opening the Lab 5 AltiBoard file attached to this module. For better visualization, ensure that Copper Inner 1 and Copper Inner 2 in the Design Toolbox are unchecked. We are going to start off by corner mittering. Remember that corner mittering is used to reduce or remove sharp angles for placed traces. To see the effects of corner mittering, zoom into an area where you can see traces with sharp turns. For example, zoom into R10 by double clicking on it in the spreadsheet view. Now select Design, Corner Mittering, click Entire Design, select Arcs, and set the angle maximum to 150. Observe the results. You can use the Undo and Redo actions to easily observe the change being made. Now we are going to apply the teardrop. Recall that a teardrop is a flare that you can add to a trace where the trace connects to a pad. Teardrops are important because they facilitate soldering and create a more conformal shape of assembled boards. Select Design Teardropping. Click all of the following and click OK to add the teardrops. You may receive a message that says teardrops were failed to be created. You can fix this by modifying the trace connection to the pad, selecting the pad and calling the Add Teardrop function again. Once you are done with these changes, it is time to check the design rules and connectivity. You can check the DRC errors using the DRC tab of the spreadsheet view as they occur and they will disappear when they are corrected if the real-time DRC check is enabled in the global preferences. To run a DRC, select Design, DRC, and Netlist Check. To locate the DRC error, simply double click on the error listed in the DRC tab and AltiBoard will zoom into the location where it is detected. Usually, the most common error is a clearance error. Remember, to view clearances, select View, Clearances. Observe the screen in front of you and notice where the error is reported that there are two clearances overlapping each other. To fix this, Move the trace so that the clearances are no longer overlapping each other. As you can see, this removes the DRC error. 
You also have the option of running a connectivity check. A connectivity check should be performed periodically on your design to ensure that nets, pins, and net lists are all synchronized and accurate. To run a connectivity check, simply select Design, Connectivity Check, and select All Nets. You can check the results in the Results tab of the Spreadsheet view. If there are no errors, then your net list is up to date. To clear the Results window, right-click and select Clear Results. A final preparation of your board to get it ready for fabrication would be placing text and mechanical or graphical DXF shapes on your design. Placing text could be anywhere on the design and on the bottom or the top layer, regardless of what element is selected. Placing text on your board is useful for annotation purposes. Let's set the active layer as a silk screen top and select Place Graphics Text. In the value field, enter your name and click OK. Now, click to place the text below sensor 1. After placing the text, right-click to exit the placing mode and click Cancel to exit the dialog. In UltiBoard, you also have the option of importing a company logo from a DXF drawing. To import a DXF drawing, it is as simple as selecting File, Import, DXF. Choose the logo DXF file attached to this module and select the UltiBoard silkscreen top layer to merge the DXF information onto an existing layer. Before you close the dialog box, set the units to millimeters. To move the object, ensure that you have enabled selecting attributes and place the objects below sensor 2. Your screen should look similar to the one in front of you. In UltiBoard, you can also directly place fixation holes onto the workspace without using the database. To do this, select Place Hole. Select the Hole tab and set the radius to 100. Place the two holes as you can see in front of you and use the ruler bar to place them accurately. To exit the hole placing mode, press the Escape key or right click. In addition, you can place dimensions on one of the mechanical layers. This feature in UltiBoard allows you to integrate dimensional drawing features onto your board layout. To add board dimensions, first set Mechanical Layer 1 as the active layer. If you do not see this layer in your design toolbox, you can add it by navigating to Options, PCB Properties, and selecting it under the General Layers tab. Now, to place a dimension, select Place, Dimension, Horizontal, and click at the reference point at the bottom left corner of the board. Now move to the right and click at the bottom right corner, drag outside of the board outline and click to place a dimension. Let's repeat the same procedure to place a vertical dimension. We are now done preparing our board for fabrication. The next step is to produce a file from UltiBoard in a format that can be understood by the equipment at the board manufacturer. The Gerber format is one of the most commonly used formats, and to export a Gerber file, it is as simple as selecting File, Export, and choosing Gerber RS-274X. Before clicking Export, we need to select the layers that we want to export by selecting Properties. In this example, we are going to select all the copper layers, solder mask top and bottom, silk screen top and bottom, and the board outline. Click Export and save all the Gerber files in your desired folder. The NC Drill option will create a report file and drill file. The report file indicates the size of the drill and the drill file is a Gerber file with drill centers. To generate the NC Drill file, select File, Export and select NC Drill. Try opening the drill file or report file using the text editor like Notepad. UltiBoard has a built-in Gerber viewer which you can use to verify production files. Let's try opening one of the Gerber files that we generated. Select Open and select the copper top Gerber file generated. On the screen in front of you is the information contained in the Gerber file. 
Notice that the Gerber file appears as a different design with the special layers tab as well. Altibot also includes an intuitive 3D viewer that allows you to see your board layout in a tri-dimensional graphic. If you were to view your design in 3D, select View 3D Preview. You can use the left mouse button, scroll wheel, or use the right mouse button and scroll wheel button to manipulate the image of your 3D preview. We are now at the end of the lesson module. Your board is now ready for fabrication. Let's go through a quick quiz to test your knowledge.